Welcome one and all to the Liberty Herbicide Summer Nationals coming to you from Henry, Illinois. Hello everyone, I'm Claude Wood along with Tom McConnell and you have dialed us in for some great ATPA truck and tractor pulling today. Let's start the program out with Mr. Randy Payne and Tom, this is guesswork. And we're watching the lightweight super stock class. The diesels run unlimited cubes and the first diesel is a John Deere and Claude, he just made a full pull. And he got the John Deere fans on their feet expecting much more and we'll see more later on from other John Deere pullers. Right now though, let's go the orange route. This is the orange truck. Rick Gard from the state of West Thompson, been pulling for many, many years, knows how to handle this tractor on the northern track, but he's running short of power, gets a little wild there at the end, and you hear the turbocharger fly, and he goes down. What an ideal, picture-perfect day here in Henry, Illinois. As you can see, very few clouds in the sky and a tremendous crowd on hand for one of the fastest-growing sports in the country. That's ATPA truck and tractor pulling. Hey, Tom, what anyway, a great crowd here today. In fact, this could quite possibly be the largest crowd ever to an ATPA Jasper Engines event within the state of Illinois. And here comes the big guy himself, Leroy Mason, two-time Jasper Engines champion, on his way to a... No, I don't think he's going to do it, Claude. He's got to get a full pull with Randy Payne. Whoa, a little Leroy. bit short, a little bit short, Tom. 295 feet, and wherever Leroy goes, pretty much a crowd favorite. And no doubt about it. Here has been his nemesis, Larry Phillips. And if you remember from Boonville, Indiana, just last night these guys were down there. Larry Phillips won that event, and Larry has just made a full pull. So we will have a pull-off coming up a little bit later on between Randy Payne and Larry Phillips. Corey Forrester out of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Doing what he does best, gets wild with the hot iron Ford. Let's check it out again on the Lucas Oil replay. The track is hooking him oh so hard, hooking and unhooking, and he just gets wild and shuts down. Wild ride out there, man. Very wild. Uh, we had a little less weight on the front on the nose than what we got. I guess I'm a little too heavy to be on the driver's seat tonight. Should have let the lighter guy on the seat, but... Uh, we're still trying to see what's going on out here. It's a whole different uh, circuit here for us. This uh, this track seems a bit spongy, really sucking the tires down inside of it. Very spongy. I dropped a couple gears um, thinking hopefully I get the tires broke loose, but slipped the clutch out of the hole, nothing's going to work on this track. You know, you just got to, Phelps bogged his engine down good and kept his front end down. That's what's going to take here. Well, we'll watch as the evening progresses, Tom, how the track changes and how the drivers adjust for that. And one driver getting ready right now will be Dennis Jackson driving the Green Gambler. This is actually a throw stock tractor. Listen to the RPM and the big cubes you can hear out of this motor. Running over 600 cubic inches out of an inline six cylinder. And that will give Dennis 272 yeah. feet. ATPA truck and tractor pulling brought to you by Jasper Engines and Transmissions, the nation's leader in remanufactured engines and transmissions, and by Lucas Oil Products, number one in the trucking industry, and by Liberty Herbicide, freedom from crop injury, and we stay with us. More lightweight super stock tractors coming your way. Welcome back to the Liberty Herbicide Summer Nationals from Henry, Illinois. And you're seeing some of the festivities from the Marshall Putnam County Fair just nearby. And right now we will have a look at John Hull uh, as he drives the Wantum Mini Mo. John Hull is unique as he is the only four-cylinder in this class. Everybody else is running inline six-cylinders. The only four-cylinder will come up a little short, Claude. Yeah, Tom, just a little bit short, 290.63 feet. Right now, let's go down to the pits and pin stop. We talked about this thing being respectable, 290 feet, a very good run, and I must say on a track that is certainly very tricky, very spongy, it would appear as though you need a lot of horsepower to get down this track. Yeah, in fact, I shifted down from my normal lightweight gear and 
she still had her hands full. A little short on fuel on the end. I think I could have made the end if she wouldn't have sneezed, but I'm happy with that. It's the best it's run all year. Well, Tom, this will bring up an Alice Chalmers driven by Tim Mann. The Manns are pretty new on the circuit so far. Exactly right. I predict he'll wind up being the rookie of the year on the ATPA circuit. Look at him having to stand on that left brake to keep that tractor in bounds. A good driving job. This track is really tricky out there, Tom. It certainly is, Tom, and I think that's going to be changing even more as the evening progresses. Let's get a look right now at Darren Smith on the walk and call. The Ford is on a killer run. This is the 1996 Jasper Engine champion, and he just made a full pull quad. That's three of them out. Setting the stage for quite a big pull-off in the 5700 Super Stock class as we get a look at Rick Ross. Rick Ross out of the state of Michigan is currently in the top ten on the ATPA Jasper Engine points. He is a unique alcohol tractor for he gets to weigh 5,900 pounds running a very small cubic inch motor and it paid off one. It oh. certainly did. Unbelievable time. Another full pull and he followed. He went to school on the run before us. He followed right down the same part of the track. Well, they might have actually opened up uh, a little path there. They may have threw something out in the track to get that sled rolling there because the track is a little bit gummy to say the least. The Kemper brothers with their Alice Jalmers doing their thing. Charles behind the wheel, and I might have another full full quad. Yes. Yes, indeed. Charles Kemper rolled the orange peel right down the same groove. The floodgates have opened. You might see a bunch of them go out now. We check out a guy now we haven't seen on the Jasper ATPA series, except up in the state of Wisconsin. He's run some of the bad state events. Tom, this is Matthew Castor driving the Buck and Pumpkin. Matthew is out of Burlington, Wisconsin. I love that stock front end of that tractor, Tom. Look at that thing just dangle, and, well, the Buck and Pumpkin is done now. The tires don't even fit at the end. This track is taking a lot of horsepower, just chokes him out. He bumped out, by the way, at 240.46 feet. Well, here comes Ken McKillop on the smoker. It usually has pretty much success. Kid has yet to win an event this year on the Jasper ATPA Series two times. He has been runners up in the points, and he just made a full pull. This could be his journey point. What an impressive pull-off coming up, and you will see that next, right here on Speed Vision. The Herbicide Summer Nationals coming to you from Henry, Illinois, and as you can see, a lot of activity and a lot of festivities. This is quite a big day here at everybody's hometown in Henry. Welcome to pull-off time here in the lightweight super stock class. And Tom, this will bring up guesswork to get the ball rolling. Randy Payne will set the pace to beat. He is the only John Deere in the pull-off. So the John Deere fans are going to pin all their hopes on the guesswork tractor. He'll make a good run. We'll come up to 294.05 as we check it out with the Lucas Oil replay. Claude, that's going to be a hard distance to beat. It certainly is, and he had a great run. Wheels up in the air, just what he planned on doing. Let's go down now and check in with Ken Stout. 294.05. I'll tell you, this thing is working really good tonight. Well, it done a pretty good job. Seemed like I didn't get out hardly as hard as I did the last time, but we done the best we could. It's time now for the Valco Tech Talk, where we share some of the best kept secrets of the motorsports industry. Brought to you by Valco of Cincinnati. Now, with our Tech Talk, here's Brett Kepner. You know, in just about any mechanical application, be it automotive, marine, or even farm equipment, you're going to find a problem with the common nut and bolt. Just about everybody at one time or another has had liquid get down through the threads into the bolt where it connects to the nut and you end up with a nut and bolt that are inseparable. Well, there are several different options that you can take. First of all, the new Hylomar product from Valco is probably one of the best when it comes to thread sealants that allows not only the ease of putting on the thread sealant but also the ease of taking the bolt off later on while holding it secure. Likewise, if you get one that's really tough, there's always the classic anti-seize. In this particular case, a brand new non-metallic environmentally safe product that is still a grease that will probably help budge at least the toughest ones. But one of the best products to come along in a long time is Threadlocker. 
Now, there are a lot of different thread lockers out there. This particular Valco product is a classic example of it. A lot of people don't realize that while thread locker will help keep the bolt on the nut, later on it will also make it easier to take off that same bolt from the nut. And that's where the key comes in. Remember, never ever put a nut on a bolt dry. Use one of these three options, because somewhere along the line, you'll thank yourself for your foresight. Now I know, Tom, where I've made so many mistakes. 294.05 will be the mark to beat in our pull-off. And, Tom, here comes Larry Phillips on Insanity. He's ready to go. And remember, in the pull-off, it is a floaty finish line. You pull that sled as far as you absolutely can. Do not stop to that flight that says, hey, it's getting unsafe, man. We've got a new leader. The international people have taken over the lead. Look at that distance, Claude, 310 feet. Well, that is the challenge, Tom, that he has set to beat. Let's go down right now and check in with Ken Stout. 310.26, that's a pretty good lick in a pull-off. Yeah, I, I thought we made a good run. It was working the motor real good, and uh, it's pretty tough out there right now. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. It's, there's a lot of good tractors back there left yet. Claude, I just got the word from the pits that Rick Ross with the Moonshiner and Charles Kimber with the orange pill will not be back for the pull-off. You're watching Darren Smith with the Ford, and he breaks, Claude. Tom, let's go now to the instant replay, see if we can figure out what happens. He has a great run going, but at the last moment here, it looks like he shuts down. Could the engine problem? Maybe Ken Stout has the answer for us. Any idea what happened out there? Yeah, we believe that we blew a water line and it forced it up into the turbochargers, which sucked a boost out of it and dropped it on its face. Just didn't need to happen then, did it? No, we've had a pretty good weekend. We've had uh, top two top fives, a third and a fifth. And then uh, tonight it looks like we'll probably fall out of the top five for the first time in a while, but it, it's running good. We'll, we'll hang in there for a while. Dom, one more puller left in our pull-off at Ken McPhillips. 310 feet to mark to beat. Ken's got a good run going. The front end up. He is starting to get close to that out-of-bounds line, and we've got a DQ. Ken McCallum just saw that tire touch that out-of-bounds line. Disqualification as we check out the results of the lightweight super stock class. Larry Phillips is on a roll. Luck's in my favor, I guess. Tractor is running good. I'm proud of it, and we, uh, we, we just want to do good. How much of it do you really attribute to luck? I mean, I, I would say not very much. Well, I don't know about that. I, there's a whole lot of it there involved, I think. You know, knowing where you put your weights and draw bar and, you know, light class is a little bit unpredictable, just like what's happened here. I mean, there's two guys here that didn't get to start that, that should have laid down a good run as well as I did. And, you know, then Ken gets out of bounds. And, you know, that... They're still, these tractors are capable of coming out here and, and beat me as well as, as what I've done tonight. So uh, it's a lot of luck, I think. Stay with us. Some big guns coming up next. The 10,000-pound O-Stock class. Welcome back to the Liberty Herbicide Summer Nationals. Coming to you from Henry, Illinois. Some great pulling action. Sponsored by the ATPA Truck and Tractor Pulling Series. This is the 10,000-pound Pro Stock Class. And Tom, this is Jerry Runow. Jerry Runow, very active in the West Central Illinois Tractor Pullers Association. Where he usually runs in the Super Farm category. Running with the big boys tonight. But he's going to come up short. 254 even for Jerry Runow. Well, Tom, we'll see if we can get a good hook out of Mr. Dwayne Hook, and he calls his tractor the T-Bone. First time we've had the opportunity to see the T-Bone on the Jasper ATPA Series, and he has problems, Clark. Whoa, well, major problems. Only 163.17 for Mr. Hook. And that, Tom, will bring up another John Deere. This is the River Rat, driven by Kevin Masterson. Kevin Masterson has yet to win an event on the ATPA this year. This could be the night. One of the toughest John Deere's ever in the sport. And that track just shoves him down there at the end. It is Mike Fallon. Check out his father, John Masterson. Check and out that flame out of his golf rod. And that is a lot of power, Tom. By the way, the mark to beat is 297 feet. And let's see if Don has a shot. He's close. But his son is still taking over the lead, Claude. 291.25 feet for Don. 
And that will bring up Nick McCormick driving a case. Nick is from Stewartson, Illinois. This is a very strong case international. Got the first opportunity to see it run at the Farm and Seaver Show this past February. And Claude, this track is awesome. When you see those engines shut down like that, that means the dirt is hooking those tires so close, it's literally squeezing the guts out of these guys. They're running out of power. And you know, Tom, that was a big question when we started the event. How will the track changes affect the pullers? And there's no way to know until they get out there. Well, I guarantee you, a lot of guys are putting weight to the front end and going down a gear to try to compete. Every tractor thus far has stuck. They have not been able to spin out, as you can just see there with the Boyd Steve, one of the toughest John Deere's ever. And he's very close, Tom, 291 feet. The mark to beat right now, 297.81. And that will bring up Mike Sarver. The Sarver team, let's see if they've learned anything from the other guys out there. He's got a good run going. You see the box top in the half. And he's close. He might have just made a full pull, Claude. That could be. He's very close. Yes, it is. It is a full pull. Tom, let's go to the replay and see what brought him to success. I'm not sure if it was a wing and a prayer or if he just did it, but an excellent, excellent run, Claude. Let's see what Ken Stout has to say along with Mr. Sark. First docker out of the gate. Yeah, I feel pretty lucky. You know, we had some advantage there. Uh, had some other tractors to watch ahead of us, knew what changes to make. A uh, uh, little bit of luck. A little bit of luck. Well, I don't know about that, Tom. There's a lot of experience mixed in with that little bit of luck. And we'll see what Jeff Rapp can do now with his one bad apple. Currently, Jeff Rapp is the number one international in the pro stock category. A lot of green ones. The John Deere's have been dominating this year, but Jeff Rapp is right in there with them. Jeff going to the right-hand side of the track, and that series, unfortunately, isn't going to pay off for him, Claude, as he is going to come up short. A little bit short at 298.97 feet. Of course, the mark to beat is a full pull. Mickey Shorter, the man who we saw earlier this year on Speed Vision up in North Branch, Michigan, won his first event in his rookie year. The Buck Eater's the name of this tractor, and it is starting to go on a run, Claude. He has a chance. He's very close. Is he there? Yes, he's there, Claude. Another full pull. We've got two green ones out as we check it out of the Lucas Oil instant replay. The tractor was weighed properly. The front end is up. It's bouncing a little bit there, but at that point, the momentum has won. Second tractor out in the pro stock category. It's going to be a tough one. Yes, it is. The tractor in front of me is very good, and there's a lot of them behind me very good, so it'll be a good night. A good night indeed, and four coming up on this good night. The pull-off coming up next. Stay with us. Tuning us in tonight on the Liberty Herbicide Summer Nationals coming your way from Henry, Illinois. Well, Tom, as the temperature goes down just a little bit and darkness comes on, that means more horsepower. And as along with that, the track is also changing as the evening progresses. Yeah, I think it's I think it's getting better, Claude. I mean, it's the guys are compensating for the fact that the track is so good, but it is getting better. If we check out something we don't see or hear a lot of. A V8 Massey Ferguson. Check out the sound on this one, Claude. Sounds like a real irate school bus or something. The Coon team will come up short, but I love listening to that main run. Definitely a different sound. 252.41 for Mr. Coon. And that will bring up Jerry Reed. Of course, Jerry is not only in his hometown, but he's also active on the Marshall Putnam County Fair Board. Wanted to do good at home, but just didn't quite happen the way he wanted as we check out the foolish pleasure of Gary Brinkmeyer. Real stout international, maybe making more horsepower than any of the red ones out there. And Claude, he just made a full pull, the first red one in the pull-off. Right out the back door, a full pull indeed. As we take a look right now as Sonny Snyder getting ready to do business on Thumper, let's go to Ken Stout. You drugged that thing across by a month. Well, it was a, felt like a good run there, but uh, I see we got a little fuel problem here. We, I think we got a line loose or broken. We got to go back and try to fix it for this pull-off here. Should be a good one. I mean, it must have felt like a great run to you. It was excellent. 
She hooked good, went good, sounded strong. So that's better than it's been the last couple times out. <laughs> And, Tom, all the pullers definitely know, once they make a bull, and probably after even a third of it is gone, they can tell if the track is hooking or not. Oh, absolutely right. Here's a guy just down the road, close to a hometown boy, Gate City, Illinois, is where Sonny and Scott Snyder saw a home, and they just made a full bull, Claude. We've got two red ones in the pull-off as we check it out with the Lucas Oil replay. The Snyder team makes a perfect run. The front end just shoots up. He shoots like a bullet, the nose down on the ground, and out the back door he goes. Out the back door indeed, and what a powerful run, Tom. The last third of the track wheels barely a foot off the ground. Bruce uh, uh, Skinner's up on the line now. This is Andy Macdor, John Deere, to say the least, Claude. Do you see this thing all waxed up? It is just gorgeous. Another one of those strong John Deere's from the state of Illinois. He has pulled here before. A little bit of a home track advantage, but it pulled him over to the right. He has to get on the brakes, and he will come up short. And not only short, he's disqualified, Claude. And about halfway down, Tom, really fighting the steering wheel as he tried to gain direction back toward the center, or at least the left of the track. Steve Boyd on the line now, making a good run. This is the guy that won the National Farm Machinery Show, and that track is taking everybody over to the right. He shuts her down. He didn't want to be a victim just like Mr. Skinner was a minute ago and get DQ'd. Because remember something, Claude, he's number one in the points as we speak. And he may preserve those points, but that gained him 289 feet. Here's a guy that's currently number three in the points, Paul Jeweler out of Pendleton, Pennsylvania. Beautiful John Deere, the super moose. Can he do it? Still going to come up short, 294.68. And once again, Tom, he was drawn to the right-hand side of the track. And that will draw in Mr. Troy Bader. I like the name of his tractor here, Tom. No fear, dear. Not afraid of anything, especially those Red International. Listen to the RPM out of this thing, Claude. He really has it wound up and going real straight up in the air. But once again, Tom, drawn to the right-hand side of the track. And once again, another DQ, one of the toughest tractors from the state of Wisconsin. Runs a lot with the Badger State Organization, and he just he goes out of bounds, Luck. You touch that white line, there's no mercy. No fear or not, you're DQ'd. He does, and he's out of it. Well, rules are rules, and we'll have the pull-off when we come back right here from Henry, Illinois. Six nine eight five six nine nine. It's pull-off time in Henry, Illinois for the 10,000-pound Pro Stock Class. And Tom, we're looking at Mr. Mike Sarver on the green extreme, getting set to do business. He will set the pace to meet as he is trying to back up to get hooked up to the sled. Two John Deere's in the pull-off against two Red Internationals. It's drag racing and in NASCAR, it's Chevy versus Ford, but it's ATPA Jasper Pullen, it's Red versus Green, and the Green Extreme will set the pace, Claude, and he makes a good run, 292.92. A good run indeed, Tom, very strong, but let's go to the Lucas Oil replay. I have an idea right toward the end, it drew him over once again to the right side of the track. If I can tell something too, Claude, it is biting. The track is hooking so hard and aggressively. What is it? What's part of the track that pulls a tractor over like that? Well, it just gets, it gets grooves in it from all the other runs, you know, and if, obviously they start heading that way, and that just makes the grooves that way, and if, if you don't get out of them, it's going to take you, you know, and I thought I started far enough left that I could keep it left. In fact, it pulled me left my first pass, but, uh, you know, I guess I'm seeing the whole track. I've seen both sides now. Maybe the next time I'd take it down the middle. I don't know. <laughs> Some things in truck and tractor pulling, Tom, is really an unknown. It's just trial and error and another old word called experience. Here's a guy that doesn't have a lot of experience. This is his first year in the seat of a pro stock tractor, but Mickey Shorter has already won an event. I would not count him out by any means. The buck eater is on a run. Pulling him over a little bit to that hand side, but Claude, a full pull in a pull-off, 300.09. Remember, in a pull-off, you pull it till you're done. 
a floating finish line is in effect here as the Buck Eater will now be the tractor to beat. You, like the rest of them, drifted to the right just a bit, but not quite as bad. I just was holding the brakes a little harder maybe than everybody else, but uh, that's a, I don't know. I just let it do its own thing. It's time now for the Jasper Engines and Transmissions Best Engineered Award, where the ATPA officials choose the vehicle that is technically outstanding. Brought to you by Jasper Engines and Transmissions, the leader in remanufactured engines and transmissions. Today's Jasper Engines and Transmissions Best Engineered Award goes to the Chevrolet called Child's Play, owned by Dutton Farms. That's Charles Dutton. Charles Dutton has a huge power plant in front of the Chevrolet, and it's doing a great job in 1999. Finished third on Thursday night, finished second on Friday night, and he's number two in the points right now coming into this event. Charlie, big power plant inside of this thing. How big is it? It's uh, 750 cubic inches. And that is massive. Well, it's not big enough sometimes, but sometimes it does a job. Now, I also see a little bit different style fuel injector on top of this power plant as well. You don't see the conventional solid enclosed injectors that are, that are coming into the category. Well, uh, the guy that uh, does my cylinder heads, Jones Engineering at Washington, Indiana, uh, builds a lot of sprint car motors, and they use this Kinsler injection. So we had Kinsler make us a set to fit these Oldsmobile heads, and it works real well. It was hard to get started uh, getting it to idle ride, and we've got that done, and it, it does pretty well. I'm pretty well satisfied with it. How long did it take you to get this thing sorted out? I mean, is it something you started this year? No, it's took two and a half, three years to get it where it's right. We changed camshafts uh, last winter and helped it quite a bit and uh, got the cylinder heads where they'll flow a lot and, and it's made making a lot of torque and horsepower. And typically when you make a maiden voyage, I don't know, a combination like this, I mean it takes two and a half years. A lot of times by the time you get it figured out, it's almost outdated. That's true. Uh, we had this motor on the dyno when I built it and uh, We've changed a few things on it, and in our area, there was nobody that would let me put it on their dyno. So we had to go out east, and I probably need to take it out there again and go through it to make sure it's up to its potential. Now, this category is quickly becoming the mountain motor category of pulling. As we see the cubic inches escalating, I mean, there's even rumors of 900 cubic inch motors that are out there. Yes, I think there is. There's... Uh, a Ford down south, I think, that's uh, almost 900 cubic inches, and we're pulling against some that's over 800 cubic inches. Is this something you feel like you're going to have to change and step up to? No, uh, I think we've got uh, this motor, I think, the right cubic inch for us. Uh, I think you can have too much torque, and it hurts you uh, on the track. You can't hook the truck up as well. Charles mentioned the fact that you must keep this power plant behind the grill. I should tell you that you're not allowed to alter the location of the grill. You can't extend these front fenders and move the grill out, obviously enabling you to move the power plant out, which would get a little more weight out over the front tires and packing them down so you can get good traction and pull the sled a little bit farther. Also, it's two years of ingenuity, of engineering to combine this injector system with a 750 cubic inch engine. And of course, all the other instruments that are included in this truck that help it pull so well. That's why he's won the Jasper's Engines and Transmissions Best Engineered Award here, and that's also why he's number two in the points and going for a win. 300.09 feet is the mark set to beat by Mickey Shorter, and that will bring up Gary Brinkmeyer, Tom. First look at an international in the pull-off quad. And Tom Gary has a great run going very strong, wheels up, and a pretty true run right down the middle of the track. And Claude, he's done it 303.74. We know one thing, an international's gonna win tonight because there's only one tractor left and it's red. Will it be Brinkmeyer or will it be Snyder? We're gonna find out. It felt good again. Uh, tractor finally got the power back to it. Pump's consistent. Uh, still got one guy to go yet though. Yeah, there's one more guy, and this really isn't over until it's done, right? That's right. It's not over until the fat lady sings, as they say. 
Well, Tom, you're right. It's all in the family. Another international coming up, and this is Sonny Snyder, but he has a pretty big mark to get over. Oh, no doubt about it. I love watching these throw shots. They come off the line, and at night you can see that flame shooting out of that exhaust, and the thumper makes a full pull, but he does not beat Brinkmeyer. Gary Brinkmeyer, as you can see, will win it. Sonny Snyder will finish second international one and two in the pro stock category. Excellent job. I'll tell you, he really had two of the most spectacular passes all night long in the category. Well, thanks, Ken. It, it felt good both times down through there, and uh, we hung on and just good enough to do it, I guess. What broke on it the first time? What came loose? Actually, we had a fuel return line off the injection pump come loose. We just had to tighten that up and put a little bit more water in the motor and run it a second time. Stay with us, those wild four-wheel drives coming up next. Welcome back to the Liberty Herbicide Summer Nationals coming your way from Henry, Illinois. And as promised, this will be the four-wheel drive pullers. And Tom, this will bring up Kim Eddington and the Bust and Loose. First look at the four-wheel drives is where you see the Chevy and the Forces and the occasional Dodges wrestling with each other. The competition. Now, Kim Eddington is the first puller. He has the option to keep this full or to drop it, and he will drop the last. Well, we'll see later if he made a correct decision or not as we take a look at the mad dog, Aaron Mobley, getting all set to do business. Aaron is a veteran in this sport. Been pulling since the late 1970s. He always, always did the hunt. Look at the dirt throwing up there. I love that, Claw. 290.25 as we check out Mr. Friday. 290.25, and the sled is official. It felt good to me. Uh, it could get better, but I don't think it will. I think the track will go away. Well, Tom, only time will tell. We've seen a lot of changes so far, but we could see even worse changing as the evening progresses. And like you say, here comes Lynn Friday driving the Intimidator. Mobley should know if the track's going to go away in the tractor category, though it seemed to get better, but look yeah. at the distance, 290.03, maybe it will start to go away a little bit for the truck category. Well, only a difference of a few inches, but once again, time will tell as Mike Clark comes along, and here comes the pack rail. Mike is out of Staunton, Indiana. Mike is a stunt. categories he's now running with the big boys but he's going to come up short at 283.93 as we check out Wally Harvell now the blue max and Claude he is bouncing he is bouncing all over the track Tom but where will he end up is the question and take a look at this Tom 268 feet the last three pullers have diminished in their distance yeah but I'll tell you Wally when you start bouncing like that Claude it's Cost the distance, and you can definitely see that in his distance there. The stump puller out of Marshall, Illinois, just down the road doing his thing, and the track just chokes him. Real high gear, he runs out of power, Claude. 267.91. Wow, is this track changing. We check out one of our Badger State four-wheel drive modified pullers, the Foolish Farmer out of Arlington, Wisconsin, coming out of the home. Got a good run going right now, Claude. He does it that. But, again, he's drawn to the right. 194.40. As we take a look at Jim Moots driving the Buckeye Shaker, let's go down now to Ken Stout. Truck was singing pretty good there for a little bit, and then it all took an ugly turn. Yeah, I uh, put this engine in at 1 o'clock this afternoon, and uh, I had trouble with it earlier this year. Um, I was happy. I thought I was moving pretty good at uh, about half track, and then it just... Uh, petered out there for, for a while. I don't, we'll have to take it back home and see what it is. I'm not sure what it was, but it definitely did not sound right as we check out Jim Moose, the beautiful Buckeye Shaker. He has got the ground suit, Claude. He certainly does, Tom, a very strong run and great traction right off the track. Yeah. Claude, he just took over the lead. Check out the distance there. Can we check it out in the Lucas Oil Instant Replay? 
298.09. I mean, oh, so close. Certainly the best in the field so far. Yeah, it's a pretty good run. Truck felt good. I've been having some problems with the truck. You know, the motor's been running good, but getting the truck to lay down uh, tonight it felt pretty good. Well, Tom, that'll bring up Alan Sneed and one of the greatest looking trucks here, I think. That's lost in the 50s. Of course, you would like that truck law. There's no doubt about that. Must be a generation of things. It must be. It must be. But it is a gorgeous truck. And not only that, it is a ferocious truck. I love the way that big V8 just sticks right out of the front of that truck. Allen has got a heck of a run going, Claude. He gets down there in the hunt. But no cigar. A little bit short, Tom. 295.32. And you can really hear that V8 pumping. Tom Tamoyan's on the line now. The old spellbound truck. One of the winningest four-wheel drives in the history of this sport. Coming out easy. Still hasn't really got on the motor. Trying to avoid the bouncing that has been caused. A lot of trucks will wind up short. And he, too, will wind up short. 276.25. Tom, that'll bring up Ronald Baker driving the Renegade. Ronald, not too far away for Sales, Kentucky. Of course, Galen Young is the guy that won the gas range points with this truck last year, and he might just win this pull. A full pull as we check it out on the Lucas Oil replay. The truck is humming. This truck has been on hill for the last two to three years. Just awesome, Claude. That's getting the job done. Not only that, you didn't want to quit either. You sat there and just let her dig down a little bit. Well, every inch counts right now. I tell you what, there's a lot of tough competition, and you, you better put 100% of thought and effort into this sport today. Well, I mean, the closest one to you was 298. The fact that you got it over the line at all is pretty impressive. Well, it felt like a real good run. We made a couple changes to the truck today and really worked on it, and I don't know. I'd say there'll be some other trucks to get it out. We'll be in pull-off. So we got we got to get everything ready for a pull-off. Okay, we'll see if he gets it ready. Ron Brummel coming up next in the orange truck. The truck that's been around for many, many years. Got a new paint scheme and body on it this year. But he doesn't have a lot of ground seat, Claude. Ah, uh, yeah, he's going to come up way short. Something not right on that. Way short indeed, 260 feet. As we go to the Lucas Oil replay, you can see all four wheels really digging in. But where did it change, Tom? I'm not sure, Claude. I think we better get our man in the pits to check it out because I'm not sure what happened. Well, it, it looked real good right up to the point where it quit going forward. Uh, it, it hooked great. It was it was going good, plenty of power. And the only thing I didn't hear, even hear a noise, the only thing I can figure, maybe the transmission broke. Stay with us. More exciting action from Henry, Illinois, as we continue with the 4x4s. Welcome back to the Liberty Herbicide Summer Nationals coming your way tonight from Henry, Illinois, as we continue with the 4x4s. And this will bring up Lim Freeday Senior. Lim Freeday Junior pulled earlier, pulled up in the 290 area. And there I am the same team even though they want to have bragging rights at the who be two on the way back to Missouri but it looks like dad will have the bragging rights as he will pull a heck of a pull 295.17 good enough for fourth place at this point Claude well at least so far he beat his son well here comes Steve Clem and the Radical Radical on his way to a good run as well but the scooter doodle sled start to shut him down Claude Shut him down at 285.13, just a little bit short. And here comes Cody Lewis. Cody Lewis, another strong competitor from the great state of Missouri, making a lot of RPMs, a 650 cubic inch Chevrolet out of that machine, but it's starting to bounce one. He's going to come up short. Well, his truck name is fired up, and it was for a while, but he became unfired at 281.37. Here's a look at a truck we haven't seen. John Lynch in a while had some problems earlier on this year. But the Helenville, Wisconsin native is on a run right now. Not going to do it, Claude. 278 and Jake. A little bit short. I'd like to play on his name there, Mr. Lynch, and he calls it Lynch Mob. Maybe we better not ask. Yeah, it might be safer. 
We, of course, know the name of this truck. Donna Webb, the Webb Enterprises, two-time cancer, ACGA points champion. The lady, the Ford, comes up short, 293.13. A little bit short indeed. It's time now for the Lucas Oil Best Appearing Award, where we choose the most professional and best-looking truck or tractor in competition. Brought to you by Lucas Oil, number one in the trucking industry. Now, with our Best Appearing, here's Ken Stout. Today's Lucas Oil Best Appearing Award goes to the defending champion from 1998 in the super modified category, Joe Ader. Joe Ader with a brand new tractor. This is not the one that we saw him use last year. Absolutely brand new piece, and he's done a great job with it. It's spotless from one end to the other. Joe, how do you keep this thing so clean? No, you got to keep the power washer handy and all that. We move a lot of dirt with these things, and it's just uh, you constantly keep blowing things off, try to catch it when it's dry and blow most of it off, and go in and, you know, wash it off and stuff. But that's... Uh, Probably about 65% of all the work is keeping the clean, you know, keeping them clean and keeping everything dirt-free, you know, so everything works right and stuff. But uh, it, it's a job all on its own. Tell me why a brand new tractor? I see obviously a new sponsorship on it, but a brand new piece. Uh, basically, uh, winning the points two years in a row, and uh, you know, basically I, w I had to come out with something new. Uh, I'm building chassis for other guys, and uh, competitors come up couple of years later and say you know uh, what's new you know what's working and and if I had the same unit I had four years ago I mean they probably wouldn't come back to me but you got to try to stay on top of the game and try to keep making changes and uh, you know it's the 90s going into 2000 and we got to keep moving and trying to keep the sport progressing forward so tell me about the sponsorship it's not your typical oil can tobacco or beverage sponsor it's completely different yeah it's uh, Serrano Cheese wanted to get involved with the sport because of the the family type people that are uh, you know, involved in the sport, the, the farmers and stuff that, uh, you know, they all kind of all work together and it's just, uh, uh, they wanted to go out and uh, they like the TV idea and uh, the amount of coverage we do for them. And, uh, and then basically being a top tractor in the country, we want to basically go out and, and make Toronto cheese number one cheese country in America. Joe is from North Collins, New York, and he owns Ader Motorsports. As he mentioned before, he built the four power plants on the front of this tractor, as well as the chassis. He also builds chassis for the super stock category and the two-wheel drive category. This chassis working very, very well for him. He mentioned he was not number one in the points, but let me tell you something. Only two or three points behind Wayne Creech. He's going to be a definite factor here in 1999. And keep in mind, he does use this tractor. Just two days ago, they were pulling with it. And yeah, you might find a little bit of dust or a little bit of dirt on it here and there, but he hasn't had a chance to go home. All he did was come to the next pull, and as you can see, this thing is beautiful. Right, Ken, not only beautiful and best of hearing, but Tom, those things are so much fun to watch, and those guys will be up a little bit later, but right now, more business at hand at the 4x4. Brad Hunter making a good run, but he's going to come up short again. It looks like a good night for the guys up in front. Aaron Mobley might be right, Claude. The track just might be going away for these smaller tire vehicles. It would certainly appear so as we take a look right now at Randy Nelson driving the family affair. And Randy has a pretty good run going, Tom, but he will only get 281.54 feet. Look at Junior Brown now. He's finally named this vehicle. All these years he's been pulling, never had a name on a vehicle. Well, Junior changed that earlier this year. The bad addiction truck. That track is really working him. He gets a little wild there at the end, trying to pick up some extra inches. Wow, a little different there on the end, Tom, as it jerked him over to the other side of the track. Here's our best engineer award from earlier, Charlie Dutton. Charlie's riding on that right-hand side of the track, thinking that's the place to go. Let's see where Dutton winds up. He's uh, gonna... Not exactly the place to go. 289.55. Not a bad run, but... Not perfect either. Hey, that's for sure. Last truck of the evening, Kim Eddington taking the same path that Charlie Dutton just did. He gets down there, but still going to come up short, 289.72. You can see Ronald Baker takes his buddy's truck, Galen Young's Renegade, to two wins in a row. Well, get your hearing protection ready when we come back. Those wild screaming modifies. Are you ready for the wild and screaming super modified? Doesn't matter, Tom. Here they come anyway. 
Speaking of Tom, we've got Tom Morsi on the line. Almost a picture perfect run for a super modified tractor. One of the front engines getting a little excess fuel up there, but Morsi will set the mark to beat 294.39. A great run to check out the triple trouble of Ed Stahl. Ed once again getting pulled to the right hand side of the track. 296.50 feet for Ed Stahl. And we saw this guy a few minutes ago, Tom. This is Joe Enter. He has won the best engineered award and the best appearing award before. Last year's defending Gasper champion, Joe Enter. Still going to come up short. Ed Stahl beating him with a triple clause. And Joe ended up with 295.73 as we take a look at Wayne Creech. And he has a great run going, Tom. Currently, Wayne is the leader on the Gasper ATPA points. And he is the leader of the class flood. A first full pull in the super modified category. Yeah, that dirt dancer danced right on down the track. Wayne Kreider now. Wayne getting a little wild there. Run it up. It took a turn to the right, a turn to the left. Settles down, but no full ball for Wayne Kreider. That double dose plus one netted 286 feet. Listen to the sounds of this one, Claude. And as you can see, some of the folks in the audience there, Tom, about everybody, the smart people anyway, have their ears covered up, and no wonder. Oh, check that out. The excess flames. The B12 Allisons as we check out another Allison. This is Nelson Bergman. Two B12 Allisons. One of them turbocharger. The other one is fuel injected. Look at the dirt those things. Yeah, he only kicked up dirt about 30 feet there. We check out the other member of the Bergman team running down the track. Look at the exhaust manifold just glowing from heat, Claude, and look, a fire out there even. Well, even with fire and heat and everything, 269 feet. We check it out. The points race is getting tight. Wayne Creech will increase it as he wins the class. And that's it from Henry, Illinois, for Tom McConnell and Ken Stout, Claude Wood, so long.